Hey, mon ami, c'est encore un temps ici. Aimes-tu les Easter avec le beautiful bunny? Si pas beau ça. Pa 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 pa. Not this time. Not this time. It's pouring, baby. It's pouring. As a thoroughbred, your seats are a feather bed. You turn everybody's head to death. Hello boys and girls, I'd like to tell you a story. Now you may think that this is just another ordinary fairy tale, but in truth it is but another chapter in the colorful history of one special nation. It is an ironic string of events tied together by coincidence and chance. Our story begins in a kingdom to the east in a city called Shushan. A long time ago, in a faraway land, there was a king named Akashverosh. Akashverosh was ruler of the whole civilized world. He was a man of great strength and endless power, not to mention ruggedly good looks. In order to boast his great wealth, Akashverosh held a party of mammoth proportions, a party to end all parties, lasting 180 days. <laughs> Gonna need to see some ID. All right, go on in. As the hours turned into days, days into months, the parties became louder and more vile in the attempt to achieve new heights of enjoyment and pleasure. Needless to say, to their sorrow, they found that just like any other drug, the allure of these parties had begun to slowly wear off and they were becoming completely indifferent to their effects. Hanging by a small thread over the abyss of depression, Akashverosh and his subjects turned to wild and drunken behavior in order to distract themselves from the inevitable fate of complete emptiness. This condemned process continued for many moons, until one day, due to a drunken argument with one of his guests, Akashverosh summoned Vashti, his lovely queen, to appear before the royal court and to bestow upon them her dazzling beauty. I must fetch the queen. Queenie! 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 The king wants to see you now. Ew! That guy know! Oh god! He is not going to like this! Your wife, she don't want to come. What? The extensive party finally ended, and when Achashverosh arose from his drunken haze, 
He realized his grave mistake and was stricken with grief. My wife, she left me, left me she, my wife, she left me, she left me my wife. Hey, Mordecai, get back here! Where are you going? You don't pay me enough, I quit! After a long period of mourning, lasting about 26 seconds, Achashverosh decided to begin the search for his new bride. you can be Bush and I I just don't think she's the one No I'm I'm still an exception It's clear to all that the king was thrilled with the last contestant. Her name was Esther Bat Avichail. He insisted that they be wed immediately. Some time later, a man named Haman rose to a position of power in Achashverosh's court. He was an egotistical and conniving man, a direct descendant of Amalek. One day, he decided to hate the Jews and to kill them all. Haman obtained an invitation to the king's palace and presented his plans to Achashverosh himself. Say hello to my mother. Where is your mother? Right there. Where? Right here. She in the ash. Mamma mia. Oh. You want something to drink? Drink. What are you? 
call me? Who call you? I am Hamad. No, I am uh, Antiochus. He is sad. I am Antiochus. You are a Hashverosh. I brought more vodka. I mean, I don't care what you say. Great. What's okay, okay. Doing? Punchline. I have six questions. Where did the pizza come from? <laughs> that was so crazy. Let's make a toast. Toast! To kill the Jews. What? To kill the Jews. Oh, yeah! yeah! After receiving the king's approval, Haman cast lots in order to determine the date of the Jewish annihilation. Word of Haman's intention spread like wildfire through the Jewish community. The queen, herself a Jew, whoops, did I forget to tell you that? Well, I don't feel too bad because she didn't mention it either. Anyway, Esther decided to take matters into her own hands and invite Haman and the king to a party at her palace. Somebody's trying to kill the Jews! Who? Hang on! No! I swear! Do the shark thing! The king sentenced Haman to death on charges of treason and overdue parking tickets. His wife Zeresh and his ten sons were hanged along with him. Their names were Harshandata, Dalphon, Aridai and Arisai, Aspata, Porata, Adalia, Adkovi. Aridata, Parmashta, and last but not least, Vaizata. After the executions, Ahasuerus sent out letters to all of the 127 nations under his rule, declaring that the Jews will be allowed to defend themselves and to fight back. Take a look out there. Adam! Shut up, no! Yehuda. Take a look out there. The Greeks, okay? The greatest army in the world. They're missing one thing, though. Missing one thing, though. <laughs> they don't have God on their side. <laughs> they can ch try changing our way of life. No, but they won't. They can try killing us. No, but they never change our freedom. Alright boys, listen, we're gonna kill those candy Jews. Oh, we oh. hate them Jews! Yeah, we have something that they don't! Many, many gods! to overcome their enemies and to defeat them. That day, the same day on which Haman had planned to carry out his evil scheme, had become a day of triumph, a day of success. From then on, the Jewish people undertook to read from the Megillah, to feast and to give gifts to the poor every year on that very date. 
ליהודים הייתה אורה ושמחה, וששון ועיקר. The Jews had light, gladness, joy and honor.
Yoda, let's go.